this video, I'll talk about how band theory accounts for the electrical properties of metal, insulators, and intrinsic semiconductors. In metals, the valence band and the conduction bands overlap to form a continuous band, hence there is no band gap. This means that unlike in insulators and semiconductors, the electrons from the valence band do not need to obtain energy to jump from band to jump across a band gap because a band gap is not present. This means that the electrons here in the valence band are free to move around because of the space provided and hence conduct electricity. Hence we say that metals are good conductors of electricity because there are many free electrons. Compare that to an insulator. In an insulator, the valence band is completely filled while the conduction band is completely empty at temperature T equals to 0 Kelvin. There is a large band gap of 5 electron volts and this large band gap of 5 electron volts means that a large amount of energy is required to bump the electrons from the, conduction, from the valence band to, electric, to the conduction band. If you use quantum physics to calculate, you can find that the frequency or the wavelength required is around 240 nanometers, which is in the range of ultraviolet light. That is to say, if you put an insulator of this band gap under the sun, which has ultraviolet light, the insulator should become a slightly better electrical conductor. However, at room temperature, the thermal excitation is actually smaller than the band gap. Hence, very few electrons are thermally excited into the conduction band. This is because, once again, the electrons are not able to exist in the band gap. It is a forbidden zone. Right? Even if the electron manages to get to the conduction band, it only stays there for a short period of time because the lifetime is very short. Hence, you lose energy and quickly go back down to the valence band. And hence, insulators are not good conductors of electricity. Let's look at a semiconductor. The semiconductor is essentially the same as an insulator, except for one, the band gap is much smaller. An insulator has a band gap of around 5 eV, a semiconductor has a band gap of around 1 eV. Next, although at temperature equals to zero, the semiconductor has a packed valence band and an empty conduction band. When it's at room temperature, electrons are missing from the valence band and are found in the conduction band. This means that these electrons in the conduction band are free to conduct electricity and the holes that the electrons leave behind are also free to conduct electricity. This will be further explained in the next video. So this one band gap, uh, this, this band gap of 1.1 of 1 eV is true for two semiconductors that we know of. They are the silicon semiconductor and the germanium semiconductor. These materials are intrinsic semiconductors. Once we reach room temperature, the, a small number of electrons gain sufficient thermal energy to jump from the valence band into the conduction band. Hence, this causes the electrical conductivity to increase as the temperature rises. And this is also why devices like thermistors and semiconductors can be used to monitor temperatures. If you calculate using quantum physics, this band gap of 1 eV results in a wavelength of around 1000 nanometers, which falls in the range of infrared rays. Hence, it's not surprising that room temperature is able to bump up electrons from the valence band into the conduction band. 